On today's episode, it's the ADP price check. Look, the average draft position, what the market is telling you about these players, it is incredibly important. It might be the most important thing about the draft season. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and leave us some comments. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome into the podcast. It's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast if you are nasty. Oh, ho, ho, and I'm nasty. That was a, full of some vigor. I mean, when you're nasty, you're nasty. And when you're the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, we're here. As you can tell, Andy is out for the day, so that makes me the host with the most. You are welcome, America and the world. That's right. We are international, and when Dad's away, the boys will play. Absolutely. Hot off of the Detroit live show. Jason, how did it go for you? It went excellent. There was a lot of pandering. Uh, the crowd. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> yes the the moment of the show was a complete surprise to Andy and myself uh, when Jason revealed. I, well, the did you reveal that you were born in Detroit, Michigan at that no, show? No, no, that that was, was that just before the that show? was just in uh, mic okay. checks and and joke times. But um, you did reveal your your true heart and passion. For the Detroit Lions fan base. That's right. That's as you right. joined them. As I tore off my shirt for a Detroit Lions undershirt, and uh, that was actually all Brooksy's idea. Oh, was it? little shout out to the uh, richest richest man in the world. He, uh, he, he probably comped it, right? Oh, for sure. He bought all that stuff. Brooks, do you own the Detroit Lions, like, secretly? Not yet. Not oh, he, yeah. he's working He on says it. not yet. He owns Ford, which owns mm, the Lions. Gotcha. So we, we see right through you, Brooks. But thank you so much, Detroit, coming out. Felt the love. It was an incredible show. Uh, th that podcast dropped on Tuesday. And if you want to check it out, which I highly recommend, youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers if you want to get a visual on that action on today's show. An ADP price check, which is like it's always fun. We're playing a bit of the game. We're going to use the ADP from Sleeper. We're going to see what mock drafters on that platform uh, what they've been up to, where they are selecting players, and ADP at this time, it is it is everything. The market of the draft position f dictates so much of where you actually extract value. It's If you don't know how to play the ADP, ADP game, you aren't going to succeed in fantasy football at this point. The community is smart enough to where the value really makes a lot of uh, impact. We're going to talk about that on the underdog segment today in sure. best ball, like illustrating – really the difference between you know grabbing value or just grabbing good players follow us over on the social medias we got twitter at the ff ballers on instagram.com slash fantasy footballers we do have a big a big announcement to start the show look the ultimate draft kit it is available it launched on june 1st it is our draft tool that updates over the entire off season we often run some you know, giveaways uh, associated with it. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are, we are teamed up with the Scott Fish. I believe you have to say the Honorable Scott Fish. The kindest man that anyone has ever known. Everyone be like Scott Fish. Yeah, when I grow up, I want to be like Scott Fish. But anyways, he runs a giant tournament every year called the, the Scott Fish Bowl. And you'll see it on socials. Everybody wants in on this action. It's a great tournament. Uh, a lot of charitable things are going on. Scott Fish, like I said, an incredible human. And he gave us three spots. Ooh. Three spots to give away. To the Foot Clan. To the Foot Clan. And but wait. And these are not just spots. What's special about them, Mike? They're not just spots in the gigantic tournament. Thousands they're, of players. They're spots in our division. You, so you will get to play against the fantasy footballers. We are giving away three spots. If you have ordered the Ultimate Draft Kit, you are in the running. You are in the raffle already. You're good. You have through this Sunday if you want to be part of that raffle. That's right. You uh, you know you're getting the ultimate draft kit anyways. If you 
want a chance to play in not only like this this is a, like a listener league spot might even be better because you're getting the prestige of both playing with us and the Scott Fish Bowl but get your UDK before this weekend and then Monday we will pull someone and on Tuesday's show we will announce the winners and that's exciting. We we play in the yes. Scott Fish Bowl every year and now we'll be playing with some friends. Yep, so that is big time. The quick question of the day. Jason, which offense could take the largest points per game increase in 2022? For example, last or er, two years ago, Cincinnati scoring under 20 points a game. Last year, jumped to over 26 a game. Who do you think can make? Oh my god! I know it's funny. I'm seeing your answer now. We're Jason. We've left the state of Michigan. Well, this is why you don't have to do this. This is why you know it's not pandering. My answer is the Detroit Lions, and the reason is because if you, if you look at Cincinnati, right, one of the big um, things that happened was a massive injury was undone, and Joe Burrow sure. said, "Oh, hey, I'm I'm here." And they drafted a great uh, rookie wide receiver who made an impact. Well, you had a lot of injuries to the Lions. I think that their offensive line is great. You know, we we talked about Swift on this last episode for me as a breakout. T.J. Hawkinson missed a lot of the season. They, they drafted Jamison Williams, Amon Ra. I think this is a team that is the arrow is pointing up. Goff is a good enough quarterback to get it done. And if you look at last year, you know, they, they didn't even score 20 points a game. So they have a lot of room to go up. And and I will say this, our default answer is clearly Denver, right? They didn't get sure. 20 points we, a game either. We're saying either. that you can't pick them. Yeah, because, uh, you know, they added a Hall of Fame quarterback. So, uh, duh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going, look, I'm going with the New York Giants. Uh, they are being absolutely left for dead, which... I mean, I get it. Uh, uh, you had, you know, the Joe Judge experiment the last couple of years. Shocking. It didn't work out, Jason. Man, the, that the, guy was so cool, too. <laughs> the guy who was running in there with just That's a joke. That was sarcastic. Just testosterone bleeding out of his pores, making guys run la professional football players, making them run laps when they make mistakes. See, this is what's cool about Dan Campbell and my Detroit Lions. Sure. Is like he is as high T as it gets. Yes. But he's yes. a cool dude. Yes. Like, everybody likes Dan Campbell. Nobody liked Joe Yeah, from, Judge. from the reports, it sounded like not many people were pleased with Joe Judge. Um, and, uh, I mean, on top of that, their offensive coordinator, Brooksy, their offensive coordinator, you know, w well known to you, the master of clapping, Mr. Jason Garrett. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, did you, you block that out? Yeah. yeah. He was there. And that guy uh, sucks at all things football. And now, look, you got... You got Brian Dable coming in, the guy who was part of the the masterminding of turning around the career of Josh Allen. Well, not, I mean, whatever, not maybe not turning around, but getting it pointed to the North Star. He was there when they yes. got Stephon Diggs. Yes, <laughs> right. Hey, he just look. I think he is. I think he is a good offensive mind, and look, Daniel Jones, not, not Josh Allen, because no one is gonna. No one ever in the history of the NFL, I think I feel very confident saying it. No one will make the leap that Josh Allen made from his first couple years to where Josh Allen is now. But Daniel Jones has physical tools. The dude can run or he's mobile like Josh Allen. Like you don't you don't think of Daniel Jones that way, but he does. He he gets you a nice baseline of rushing. And last year they were just so horrifically bad. The New York Giants scored twenty four touchdowns. Just for some context. Uh, let's go, you know, middle of the pack. You got uh, the Saints last year, right in the middle there. 43. 43 touchdowns compared to 24. I think that uh, the Giants, we might be sleeping on them a little bit too hard. I, I actually like that you're bringing this name up because when you said it, my my brain oh, went... Oh, it feels gross. My brain went, Daniel Jones. Yeah. And so was, I'm capped because Daniel Jones. But the coaches matter a lot in the NFL. We all know that. And and these are significant changes, I think, in the right direction for the offense. While you said that, I completely agree with you that like no 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 one has ever gone and taken the leap that Josh Allen has. He went from one of the worst. Like he was so inaccurate. Though I believe he was the most inaccurate QB for two years in to a row. all of a sudden like a top three quarterback in the NFL, just right. overnight MVP candidate. Blink, blank. He's he's a superstar. <laughs> blink, blank. Blink, blank. Do a lot of blanking. Yeah. <laughs> blink, blank. I was taking a bath. Oh, I thought you were going Grinch. Blink, 
blank blank. There you go. I, I either one works. Uh, it's a choose your own adventure here. But um, as you were saying that, I was like, yeah. Could any quarterback go from being basically a complete trash panda to really good top end? And the name, obviously, that you know might come to mind is Trevor Lawrence, right? Because he's he had the the Urban Meyer situation. He's going to now a, a much better coaching situation, an offensive NFL guy. And he was he was so bad I can't get myself to believe in him. He was so bad I just I didn't see flashes and I'm you know, I'm like out on Trevor Lawrence. I watch him drop in some of these drafts and I'm like, see you later. <laughs> um but really you've got to stay open in fantasy, especially if you're talking best balls, you're doing multiple drafts, you want to kind of diversify your portfolio and Trevor Lawrence has some of those things as well that the Jags could take a massive step up. You talk about the Giants scored so little. There was one team that scored fewer than the Giants, and that was the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. So uh, look, with Kadarius Tony doing the things that like we have a proof of concept that he can be very good. Kenny Galladay, it's been quite some time, but the guy was hurt essentially from training camp through the entire season, and they just they were really up against it last year, and I think that they can improve. Uh, so let's move on to the news. News and notes from around the league. Reports out of Florida that James Robinson is not li not likely to be ready for next month's training camp. <gasps> I do not mean to laugh at James Robinson's injury because we love the man. The injury was unfortunate. But, yeah, the dude tore his Achilles in week 16. He's not going to be ready for training camp. He's not going to be ready to start the season. Yeah, this is one where we should just, you know, a lot, a lot of times it's funny when news comes out that is exactly what the expectation was. But then it changes how everybody's drafting. Like, right. oh, oh no, what, we should have known this already. Late season Achilles, we're just hoping he comes back in his career. Speaking of injuries, James White, who is still on the Patriots, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he is a potential pop candidate, so not recovering as they would hope. Interesting because look, Damian Harris was awesome. Ramondre Stevenson was awesome when he had his opportunities. And if James White is out of the picture for the first six weeks – they're not as uh, a, not as a risky of a draft pick. If you're going to get six weeks, you know for sure that that James White is out. Well, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Jason, I'm going to let you take this first hype train piece because oh. you are you are the captain of this podcast. Oh or, man, the yeah, Athletic yeah. Beat reporter says that Gabriel Davis is quote a full time starter and is likely to bust loose as the best running mate. Of Stephon, Stephon Diggs has had since coming to Buffalo. How long is this train going? Am I supposed to stop you, it? You have to turn it off. My was, apologies. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, I was really that, waiting that for that thing. That was going. I felt I had to yell over the train. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm standing on the tracks. Uh, uh, but yes, uh, Gabriel Davis, this is um, when, when I talked about him about a month ago, he was already uh, making waves in uh, training camp, or I, I think at that point it was OTAs. Um, He's, he's really good, and he's a full-time starter. He's going to get the opportunity. I I worry about, you know, fluff pieces like this. Today's an ADP price check. Like, Gabriel Davis is clearly in the running for a my guy for me. But, wow. I, but I worry because if he ends up being priced all the way to the breakout. Let me give you an example. Right now on underdog in best ball tournaments, wide receiver 24. Yeah, I think I would still. That's I, intense. That is intense. That is intense. But that's, I mean, that might be really near my cap. But I, I still think he has room to beat that. But if he starts okay. getting up there, at, you know, sixteen, seventeen, like that's, I mean, you're leaving yourself not a lot of uh, cushion for positivity. We have some reports from the Athletic that the Texans will quote lean on Marlon Mack early in the season. Speaking of Achilles, yeah, it remains to be seen. Marlon Mack. I mean, he at least got back on the field. He didn't. He didn't look like the previous Marlon Mack, as in pre-injury. We'll see if the extra year has given him enough time to recover. But this, you know, it's, no one is excited to draft a Houston Texan not named Brandon Cooks, and especially from their running backs. But I mean, you got to find cheap volume somewhere at the running back position. If it turns out it's going to be Marlon Mack. That's at least interesting in the double-digit rounds. 
And look, it's the off season. It would not be complete with rep without reports out of Indianapolis that Paris Campbell, wide receiver, is running with the first team offense. And oh man, Paris Campbell is going into year four. <laughs> going into year four, like okay, let's uh, let's jump in the time machine. A round two selection by the Colts. Out of Ohio State, like absolutely elite athleticism, elite, and the guy has appeared in under sixteen games in his entire career. It's like the this guy has done nothing wrong. I, when he's on the field, you're like, okay, that's that's interesting. I mean, your opportunities to see what he can do have been uh, very far and few between. But I will say this. The team has to like this guy because a player with this injury history who has basically given the team nothing, no return on that second round pick, going into year four, he's still on the team, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, if he is actually still running with the ones, I mean, you have, you got Pity City, you got Michael Pittman over there. Uh, they did draft uh, Pierce, Al yep. Alec Pierce in the third. Kyle, is that right? In the second. In the second, okay. But other than that, like the wide receiver crew, well, there's, there's a there's a spot for Paris Campbell. It's a chicken or the egg situation. Is it that they really like Paris Campbell? They still have belief in him, and so they didn't do much to replace wide receivers. Or is it, you know, they lost wide receivers. They lost Zach Pascal. T. Y. Hilton has aged himself out, and it's like, well, we gotta we gotta keep Paris Campbell around. Paris Campbell has been in the news just like this yeah, every single year. I'm not. I'm not buying it. You've I, never been in. That's true. I was so, I was never in, and so woo -hoo! Yeah, you, you've never been in. I was in on the prospect who is 98th percentile athleticism, 99th, 40. Uh, we got a 98th percentile speed score. Like the like I said, elite athlete. The first four <laughs> games get on the field. last year where he was healthy, played the majority of snaps, he was on pace for 38 uh, – he was on a 17-game pace – for 38 receptions of 470 yards. That was when he was healthy. Sure. I'm not – I'm – fool me once. You can't fool me. Fool, <laughs> fool me quattro. <laughs> Won't be fooled again. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, there's it, more? It, it does appear there is uh, one more piece of news. Jason Garrett, the aforementioned uh, clapper extraordinaire, yes. will replace Drew Brees on NBC's NFL pregame no, show. No, he will not. And they thought it couldn't get worse no, than won't. Drew Brees. Oh, they've done it. What are we doing? Jason Garrett is a, uh, to be fair, he is a very likable guy. Like, human being. I That's like fine. He's, he's an, well, for a commentator, I mean, he's got true NFL knowledge. He's been a head coach, an offensive coordinator. He's a nice guy. I don't know. How, like, I have not. Heard, I do. You, you know how he. I'm it, telling you, this is not ending well. The, the personality is not a uh, fire. He, Not when you clap like that. If you clap like that, the personality is like. But NBC, why, why, why Jason Garrett? Like, whatever, man. Enjoy you'll enjoy those ratings. All right, okay. <laughs> all right. Let's move on. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. All right, like we mentioned, the ADP price check. We've got some players. We're going to talk about where they are going in drafts. Again, we are using the Sleeper Platforms ADP. Some of these ADPs are certainly different over on Underdog when you're playing best ball because you're only chasing – well, not only, but you're, you're really, really chasing upside. So it could be a little bit different. But let's start here. The man who is currently you know, not showing up because he's looking for the bag – Terry McLaurin of the Washington Manders. Right now, he is our wide receiver, twenty-five, uh, and and we just we got a nice sandwich here. Yeah, you're and, Andy is the lowest. You are the highest, and I'm right in the middle. In my affection for Terry McLaurin, the athlete, the wide receiver, the man is well known on this podcast. It's just very difficult for me to get on board with such a. Bust, boom. Like He wasn't boom, bust. He was bust, boom. And now you have Carson Wentz coming into town. Jason, where yeah, do you... But hold up. Okay. Did you love Pity City last year? I did. Wide receiver 15? I did. Who was throwing him the ball? 
It was Carson Wentz. Yeah. So you say you love Terry McLaurin. <laughs> I call shenanigans. All right, let's play the game. All right. I'm going to let you kick it off. Ooh, Terry McLaurin, guess the ADP. Uh, he is the he is a clear definition of what I think a fourth round wide receiver would be. I don't Ooh, know. Wow. I don't know where that. Well, that's like always the 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 high upside. Um, boom bust like but a lot of question mark guys that's always where they're drafted um what does that make him probably like the wide receiver 18 20 but we're guessing we're guessing the adp though or are we guessing oh, both yeah what, whatever what hey do we, you guys we make the rules it's our show this is our show we can do this um i'm gonna say uh 408 and wide receiver 19 i'm gonna go lower i'm gonna go like 504 uh, and you know, that puts him, I don't know, wide receiver 21 or something like that. Where is he actually going? He's going four Oh five at wide receiver 14. Holy Whoa. crap. Okay. So there, were wow. we both, uh, well, I mean, I was too low. What did you say? Uh, I, I said, uh, four Oh eight. So I was close on wow. where, but much, much higher. Wow. Wide receiver 14 is look, I'm the highest, right? I have him at wide receiver 18. I see the path for him. I I do think that Taylor Heineke was awful. I mean, it, yeah, yeah, that's, Car that's a fair point. Carson Wentz is not great. He is not the solution, but he is a significantly better quarterback than the players that Terry McLaurin was playing with last year. But one of the lessons to take away from last year and the stuff to remember episode that I kept trying to say, man, next year I got to hammer this home to myself is that the middle of the pack quarterback changes that are here to replace the bad situation? Right. It's never the south. It doesn't fix it. So, so I think I've got. I, I like where Terry McLaurin is um, in my rankings, and I'm the highest. But man, if he's being drafted as a wide receiver, fourteen, too rich for my blood. I would not take him there. Last year we had four top ten performances from Terry McLaurin, and that included three of those were in the top five. But if he wasn't there, he you you have a couple finishes just inside wide receiver thirty six, and then a bunch of just red destruction that really hurt your team. Maybe, maybe mine is just maybe I'm getting too emotional about Terry McLaurin letting me down. You know, last year of of the potential that we saw with him, you know, his rookie year, and then. He improved from the rookie year, you know, went from 920 yards up to over 1,100 yards. The guy still finished with 1,005. It just was – we need a little bit more consistency, and perhaps perhaps Carson Wentz is enough of an upgrade over Terry McLaurin that we don't get top-tier elite Terry McLaurin, but we at least – let's add, you know, two to three boom games on there, which then Terry McLaurin – becomes far more interesting at that ADP. Yeah, and, and there were so many plays that I was I, – I remember watching Terry McLaurin last year just torch someone and get the ball kind of thrown to him. <laughs> right. But not really, and I feel like, man, it, it, he left a lot of yards – the quarterback situation left a lot of yards on the on the field. So there's, there's upside for McLaurin, but I'm not reaching for him as the wide receiver 14. And we do have a report, Jeremy Fowler of ESPN, saying the Manders have intensified – their efforts to get the long-term contract done. That's good because if he's not there, <laughs> you have Josh Dotson as your number one wide receiver. Yeah, okay. All right, moving on to the next player. We're going to go with a running back, Jason. This oh, is yeah. your dude. This is my dude. He's so good, guys. I totally agree with that assessment that he is good. Brees Hall, rookie running back for the New York Jets, drafted very high in the second round. We know that since 2012, there have been at least two rookie running backs in the top 24 every year. The running back position is a young man's game. Over the last decade, rookie running backs with ADPs in the top five rounds, you know, they get the touches. You know, 19 touches a game, nine touchdowns a season, 64% of them outperform their ADP. Will Brees Hall do that because his ADP is sitting at... Well, based on that note of being top five rounds, I'm going to say he's in the top five rounds. For sure. Um, being but on how the new, high? I, I think he's in the fourth round. Um, can I talk you into a third round Brees Hall, Jason? Oh, man. Can you talk me into picking a third round Brees Hall is 
something that you might just got on the line. You might be able to do, but not. I don't think that's where his ADP is. I'm going to stick with the fourth round. Um, so what, I, I assume that would be around running back 15. I think he's also going. But so what, for what? You're just uh, saying fourth round overall. Where where was McLaurin? Four oh five. I'm going one spot ahead. I think people take him one spot ahead. Four oh three. But you said one spot. What did I do? <laughs> you went two. Four oh four. I mean, can I interest? I, I'm not taking crazy pills here. Like that's what happened, right? Yeah, four oh four sounds good, Jason. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, what, what did you say? What did you say? I'm good at math, but I, I, I'm bad at counting. Well, you you said you said. Where did I, where did I take Terry McLaurin? Because I want to. I'm going to go one spot higher. Right. And we said you went 405 for McLaurin. And you still gave 403. Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> you're bad at counting. I'm going to go 402. I don't mm. like the fact that he is Price a, is right a, rules. a dead dead spot or a, a dead zone running back. That is extremely dangerous that area. But we, it's not it's not that no one comes out of the the dead zone, but they're they're it's harder to hit on those guys. Where is Brees Hall going currently? Four oh nine, running back twenty two. Okay, okay. And for our rankings consensus, we have him RB nineteen. Jason again has him the highest, which I would expect. Running back fifteen. I have him just outside of the top twenty four. Andy's kind of right in the middle at RB twenty. Jason, you really believe that Brees Hall can pay off that fourth round draft price? Yeah, I mean it's it's like you you just said uh, a bit ago. You know, running backs, rookie running backs with an ADP in the top five rounds, sixty four percent of them outperform their ADP. I think that Brees Hall is an excellent running back, and while there is plenty of question marks and conversations regarding Michael Carter, his involvement, uh, Zach Wilson, the reality is. I think Brees Hall will have a handful of games with a breakaway touchdown. And and when you do that, like it, he's going to have enough volume. They drafted him to to use him to have him be the the clear, you know, lead back. And so over the course of the season, he's going to get enough volume uh even if it's inefficient to be decent. Not great, decent. But when you then sprinkle in if he gets a few of those 40, 50 yard breakaway touchdowns, all of a sudden he's a top five running back a few weeks while he's got volume on the other week. So I, I really do like Brees Hall. Um, I love, I love him at that value. If he's running back 22, I can get behind that. Yeah. If you're going to take a running back in the dead zone, pick a young stud that's the, that could break out. And here's an interesting, uh, stat here about Michael Carter, because that's a thing that is holding Brees Hall into the fourth, which just one of the variables because Zach Wilson and the Jets are yeah are also, they're their own thing yeah, right like Najee was what a early second round pick maybe late in the first yeah. of his rookie year because we believed in the Steelers Michael Carter his third down role last year in 14 games Carter totaled three receptions on third down Ty Johnson was actually the main player on third downs we also know Zach Wilson just refused to throw it to his running backs so that also has to be baked into what you think of Brees Hall because his pass catching is electric but will he get enough will he get enough actual volume yeah I mean, do you have a closing comment here yeah I I don't expect Brees Hall to be some you know top six running back in his rookie year but I think he will continue to ascend as the years go on before we move into the next player let's thank our sponsors All right, quarterback Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys. Right now he is our, cons our consensus QB 11, Jason Moore. Yeah, I mean, that's on me, and I have a really, 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 really hard time with Dak Prescott. I, I look QB at this. QB 13, the guy who all he does, all Dak Prescott does is be a top 12 guy, and you said, nah, not this year, man. I did. I said, uh, not this year, man. That's exactly <laughs> right, and – I don't like it. When you're do, I like to imagine when you're doing your stats, not this year, man, that's, click. That's right. Well, and I did turn and I looked at the framed photo of Dak on my desk when I said that. Okay. So it was like to him, you know. Uh, right. It was kind of apologetic. You know, it was like, hey, not this year, man. I mean, we look, we love the doctor. Yeah, we Dr. Love Dal Schultz. Dalton Schultz is an interesting mid-round tight end. 
CD Lamb. I love CD Lamb. My guy from last year who has an opportunity to be a breakout superstar this year. We've got a report that Dak Prescott could be running more because his, his, if you remember the injury, his foot was not pointing the correct direction. It, regardless of how many times he slammed it on the ground the skin, to try and make it correct. The skin bag held the, the skin foot. Bag. <laughs> held the foot oh. on the body. That was it. If, if it wasn't for the, the bag of skin around the body, that foot was... Our medical doctors have said that is the correct terminology. The right. skin bag skin. around the foot held it together. Well, like He had a devastating ankle injury. He came back. I thought he played pretty well. Uh, and now we know that he might be running uh, a little bit more. But So, Dak Prescott, let's play the ADP game first, and then we'll talk about well, it. Well, I've been, I've been guessing first, and I feel so like Dak... I right. had a really hard time pegging him uh, where he's going right now. I would have you go first on this one. I want to see where you put him. So last year, Dak Prescott finished as the quarterback seven. We're talking about uh, you know 4,400 yards, 37 passing touchdowns, Jason. Your QB 13 of this season is coming hot off of 37 passing touchdowns. And now he might run more. Uh, Dak, Dak, you just... He keeps getting disrespected, I think, over and over and over. How many of those touchdowns were to Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup? Oh, I don't care about Amari Cooper. Okay. Uh, let's eight, go. Eight was the answer for Cooper. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. I do not. I do not care about Amari yeah. Cooper. Enjoy Dak your twenty-nine Prescott. touchdowns. <laughs> go. All right. Because <laughs> he can't possibly no. find a new receiver. Well, they're all they're all gone. They're all dead. I'll t I'll say that Dak is going in the eighth. Round I'll, so for an exact number, I'll go eight oh five. I'm gonna go nine oh four. Okay, what is Dak's ADP? Seven oh six. QB okay, eight. whoa, QB eight. Wow, so people are not worried. Good at work. All. Good work, fantasy football players. Um, so so let me let me ask you because you okay. seem to be much more in line with the uh, average draft position, the consensus here. Are you genuinely not worried about the fact that you have lost, you know, Michael Gallup, his injury was super late. He's not going to be ready to start the season. Amari Cooper is gone. Those are two massive pieces. You're replacing with like James Washington, uh, rookie Tolbert. Um, are you, but you have no worries there? <laughs> like his first name is Rookie. Yeah, Rookie Tolbert. That's what they call him around Dallas. Uh I am not as – look, those are absolutely fair concerns, but they do not worry me for Dak Prescott. Like I said, the numbers were fantastic last year. And Dak Prescott, you have to go back a ways, but to start out his career, like the guy was – as a rookie, was the quarterback six. And if my memory serves correct, his leading receiver that year was Cole Beasley. And then he followed that up as a QB 10, and one of those years was like his leading receiver was a completely washed – Des Bryant. Like Dak Prescott is good. Dak Prescott makes the pieces around him good. Is is Dalton Schultz really that great of a tight end? I mean, and like early on he was doing it with Jason Witten. Dak Prescott are getting it done. I I think that Dak is so good, he makes the the rest of his players good. And you have a true top tier talent with CeeDee Lamb. And like talk of unleashing Tony Pollard as a pass catcher this year. As QB eight is that's a that's a little bit rich, but because that's one spot of where I have him ranked. But Dak Prescott in the range of outcomes is maybe he actually runs in six touchdowns again. Can and, you? And he's back to being uh, he paying off his ADP easily. Can you imagine a situation in the seventh round? You're you're on the you're on the clock where you're going to pull the trigger on drafting Dak Prescott in the seventh. I there there absolutely is. Unfortunately, for as much as I love Dak Prescott, uh, where what is the is Jalen Hurts in our ADP guessing game? I had the, the I had the exact same and question he's, because he's the only reason that w that could push me off of Dak. Well, not the only reason, uh, Mister Trey Lance. Uh, just confirmed that starting role, and then then we're we're all back in. But Jalen Hurts, I would prefer Kyle, over Dak. What is Jalen Hurts ADP? He's QB seven seven oh three right before him. Okay. Oh. Okay, so there you go. Good for you, fantasy community. <laughs> Get, getting that right. So, Except stop it. You know, of my you know mid to later round quarterback targets, 
it includes Dak and Jalen Hurts. So let's say, you know, Jalen Hurts gets selected and there's a 49ers crazy fan that took Trey Lance in there, then yeah, absolutely I can I would be happy with Dak there. So the running you know, the report coming out that he's going to run more, which is important. He's he's healthy now and able to do that. It was a huge part of his game. That is everything to me because you brought up like, oh, he could do it with Cole Beasley or a washed Dak Prescott. He's got enough weapons. If, <laughs> yes, Brian. Yes. Yes. Goodness <laughs> gracious. It's early. Um, it, if he runs, then that's fine. When those were his leading receivers, you know, his first four years before the injured uh, season two years ago, he was averaging over 300 rushing yards and five touchdowns every year. Sure. Now this last year where he was he was good, he was, you know, the quarterback seven, he only had 146 rushing yards and one touchdown. If he rushes like he did last year but loses those pieces, and his, you know, I, I just don't see him returning. Now, obviously, if the injury is healed and they're saying we're going to get Dak running again and he's going to be a 303 uh, guy on the ground, th then he will pay off. And, and I, I still think I would not take him in the seventh because there are good, important pieces there, uh, good shots that I would rather draft at other positions. Next on the list, we've got a tight end, Mr. George Kittle of the San Francisco 49ers. Before we sing his praises, let's just we'll play the ADP game. We have we have him as the consensus tight end six. Jason, poo pooing George Kittle. Do you feel good about this tight end seven? Uh, you you wanna you wanna update those statistics? <laughs> yeah. Um. The the reality is, uh, I I love George Kittle's talent, but there's a quarterback change here. Debo is the one. If you look at the games in which Debo played, uh, you know, and you compare those with George Kittle. When when Debo's gone, Kittle is a, an all star. Sure, he's just an unstoppable force. Um, but it's been a lot of that, and then you've got to factor in the injury risk. I I am fine drafting Kittle well ahead of the tight end seven. This is just happens to be where you know when I stat these guys out for the season, what happened because Kittle's never been a touchdown guy, right? And sure, that just significantly hurts you. You figure if. Uh, Trey Lance comes in. I expect him to throw fewer touchdowns than than Kit uh, than Garoppolo. Garoppolo did, and you divvy those up. You know, obviously, if if Debo is uh, doesn't get something done, holds out for a little bit, Kittle will be a a monster. Well, even with Debo's dominant fantasy season of last year, George Kittle missed three games, and he was still the tight end four. Now I get it; you are moving over to Trey Lance, but. There are there's just there's not many tight ends that can actually do what George Kittle is is uh what he can do. There's do, two. There's two. Right, Andrews, Kid, uh, Kelsey. Right. I was actually I was gonna yeah I'm gonna pose the question to okay. you. But All right. We're getting off track, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, because dad, the, dad's gone. We yeah, can do Pablo Bear's not here. Do you prefer George Kittle? And this is in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not baking an ADP right here. George Kittle or Kyle Pitts. I prefer Pitts. Really? Yeah, I I think that the the upside is still <clears throat> with Mariota. I don't see it happening. I don't see Pitts being some uh you know eight touchdown guy. Right. But I could still see that happen. Pitts is an otherworldly talent who had you know a, an absolutely uh, over a thousand yards as a rookie. E exactly as a rookie as a tight end. Uh, going into year two, he's the center of the offense. I would rather take Pitts. If they were both at the same spot, I would take Pitts over Kittle. All right, so back to George Kittle. Uh, like I said, he's our consensus tight end six. Where is he going in ADP? I think that the fantasy community is I – th I bet that Pitts is going higher than uh, than George Kittle over on the sleeper platform. So I think that Kittle is going in – the back of the fourth, I will go four eleven. Yeah, I I think he's going in the middle of the fourth. I will go four oh six. Where is he going? Three oh seven. All right, we four. were we were both a little uh, uh, we pumped the brakes a little bit too much. It's funny because I've been uh, two different drafts. I've been on the three four turn and had Kittle there, um, and he's he's dropped into the fourth in sure. both of the drafts I was in. So 
Uh, surprised to see that his average draft position is that high. On underdog, George Kittle is going at around the 4-10. Uh, he's going behind Darren Waller. So that's that's wow. interesting. Meanwhile, you know, last year, 14 games, 71 over 900 yards, six touchdowns, a 25% target share, the second most yards after catch. And, like, yes, moving to Trey Lance could be potentially a problem for the pass catchers of San Francisco. But Trey Lance also, like, he bombs, the, he bombs it downfield, which is not – Something that Jimmy Garoppolo does. Now, if you you add add in some air yards here and the yards after catch, and it's, I, I think that there's still hope. Oh, there for is George Kittle. There is massive hope. Don't take my ranking here to say that like I'm out on George Kittle. These are kind of median rankings of you know statistical probability, but when you look at the upside and what Kittle can do that other tight ends can't do, like I have T.J. Hawkinson ranked ahead of Kittle. If they both hit, Kittle is way higher than TJ Hawkinson. Okay. You know, it's that type of a style. Like I have Dalton Schultz ahead of George Kittle, just volume um involvement in in a higher elite fantasy quarterback throwing in the ball. <laughs> Much better than Trey Lance, I would agree with you there as far as throwing the ball. Um but but if both of them hit, Kittle's way better than Dalton Schultz. So um Kittle is a guy that when you draft an early tight end, you are trying to say, I'm done with this position for the year. I'm locking it in. Like I, I because really, this, you're saying this player can be a top two tight end. Exactly. I don't want to draft a middle round Dallas Goddard and then, you know, because he's good. Dallas Goddard's good, but he can't be great in his position on that offense. So uh, George Kittle can be great. Do you expect George Kittle's ADP to change? Once we get confirmation of who the starter is for San Francisco, I don't think that there's going to be any confirmation of anything. The, the expectation right now is that it's Trey Lance. I think that's how the entire community uh, is seeing it. And uh, I saw a recent report from the Athletic that didn't, you know, they had uh, Garoppolo getting cut. Uh, that that was their beat reporter. And granted, San Francisco beat reporters are notoriously <laughs> wrong, um, but. Uh, I I uh, I don't think it will change with the quarterback news. I I think where he is, if he's if he's you know there in the back of the third, that that seems about where he will finish. Possibly slip a little. There are. What if I gave you reports that Mike Wright of the fantasy footballers is saying that Jimmy Garoppolo is not the starting quarterback? Is that is that more secure? I mean, I love that guy. <laughs> Well, thank you. You're welcome. He, he appreciates that. All right, we'll go with one more player before we jump into the best ball segment. A rookie from the New Orleans Saints who I I think that people are we're, – we're coming around here on Mr. Chris Olave. The Saints, they're, they're certainly in on him after you do the uh, – you add up everything that they traded to move up in the draft, which when they were making those moves, she's like, well, this is for a quarterback. You don't mm -hmm. trade this much of your draft capital to go up and not take a quarterback – and that's what they did, and they took Chris Olave, who is like he is truly an electric football player, but he's a rookie wide receiver. He is competing with the the, well, the hope of Michael Thomas returning, uh, and Jameis Winston is the one throwing him the ball. So where is the fantasy football community on Chris Olave, Jason? This one is really interesting. Rookie wide it's, receivers this is very tough. Rookie wide receivers can be absolutely all over the place from from year to year. Um, I I do think the last two years of rookie explosions at wide receiver will pump the the wide receivers up. So I'm going to say Olavi is it's probably higher than I think. Maybe six oh one. Six oh one. Okay, I was just going to give you a quick reminder. Eleventh overall. Olave was drafted before Jamison Williams, Jahan Dotson before Traylon Burks, mm -hmm. and just it doesn't feel like we're talking we so even you're to this point five eleven or is that what you're trying? <laughs> no, to, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't know him. where his ADP is. I'm just trying to to you know paint a paint a happy little cloud All on right. this ADP picture. Paint that cloud with your prediction. Uh, I think that you are too bullish. Maybe over uh, he feels like someone who would be going higher on underdog. Uh, but Olave really has a chance to be special. I think that he is going on sleeper. 
This is the one that can make us look really dumb. <laughs> uh, I will go. I'll go in the eighth. Oh, I mean, he could be getting propped up, of uh, you know, by like this feels very Jalen Waddle, right? Where it, we were all hot and bothered by Jamar Chase being selected top five by the Cincinnati Bengals, and he's got Joe Burrow, and then Waddle goes like immediately after him. We're like, man, he went to the Dolphins. I'm not interested in Waddle, and then he sets the rookie record for receptions. All right, I'm going to Lave. I'll stop stalling. Eight oh six ish. All right, the pick is in. It's what do we got? 8 12. Okay. Wide receiver 42. Okay. Oof. Okay. I can totally get behind that. Yes. I mean, if you're telling me that you're basically at the 8 9 turn and you're looking at other wide receivers in that range, um, it's, it's hard to think of someone who is as good as Chris Olave. Obviously, he's a rookie. We talk on the fantasy footballers a lot about rookie wide receivers don't usually historically right. pan out as draft picks. They are great guys to get off the waivers after, you know, a month of not really doing enough. And so you, you pick them up and you, the second half of the season, they're awesome. That's very common, but what they gave up for a team that is saying we win now, we are in this. They have clearly pushed all their chips in that. They think they can take this division. They could beat the bucks and they know they could beat the other two teams. Chris Olave, could very well end up being the one because we're two years removed from a Michael Thomas right. ankle injury. Who still is not ready to go. I mean, that's just craziness. Um, and you've got Jarvis Landry there, but you've got a guy in Jameis Winston that can support multiple wide receivers. And Chris Olave is – I'm really excited to see him as an NFL prospect because there, you know he was the wide receiver three for his college team, which is kind of crazy. He, he was, you know, he was behind next year's probably number one drafted wide receiver, right? And and, and Garrett Wilson and Garrett Wilson. Um, so it's it's no, you know, it's that's not that's not embarrassing. He's there right. with elite other prospects, but when I watch his route running, his refinement, his speed, sub four four, I mean, he he really could be special. I want to see how it translates to the to the NFL. And if you're taking him at that eight nine turn, I'm 100 percent fine with that. Since 2014. Rookie wide receivers with that draft capital that Chris Olave got. And they've actually seen 50 targets. So, you know, they didn't have a catastrophic reason they weren't on the field. But since 2014, they've averaged, these rookie wide receivers have averaged a 22% target share, over 1.8 yards per route run, over six uh, receiving touchdowns. That's like, you know, Amari Cooper as a rookie, which he was over 70 receptions, over 1,006, which in – where he's going right now, that's I would absolutely take that. Yeah, and it, it's you know you talked about uh, underdog. If you're playing a best ball league, probably better there because again, when you draft these rookie wide receivers, they end up going a little bit lower on underdog wide it, receiver forty eight. Fantastic. Uh, that's where I would prefer to have him, just because if the if the process is a ramp up period where he's better the second half than the first half, then as a redraft draft pick. He didn't really help on the value that of where you drafted him for those first few weeks. You might have to move on. Whereas uh, on underdog, you're getting the full season. You know, if you don't make the playoffs and redraft, you know, you you don't play those last few weeks, but you get the last three weeks with everybody. So um, you're you're in the playoffs from week one on on underdog. All right, it's underdog fantasy time. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Thank you, Andy. Every week, we are giving you, in, in, heading into the season, we're giving you a tip, some insight, some observations, playing best ball over on Underdog Fantasy. If you are new to the space, best ball is tremendous. It's, look, you, you make your draft, and you can do a fast draft, you can do a slow draft. They have... Big time tournaments over there. And if you draft with me, you can do the slowest draft of all time. <laughs> oh, no, you got a slow one going. Oh my goodness! <laughs> There's like, it's funny because I'm right in the middle of a round uh, of 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 the round, and one half of the draft is fast, and then oh, as soon no. as it goes the other direction, it's like, well, I'll see you in three days. Um, but, but so <laughs> you, you you draft your squad, and then the the computer just puts your starting roster together. Whoever does the best. And so, of course, that has, you know, 
some nuance, a little bit different than a season-long redraft. But Jason, you you have a tip for yeah, the foot claim. Yeah, a tip today. We're talking about value stacks. We we've we've spoken of stacks and not reaching on quarterbacks and a bunch of other things. But I I really wanted to illustrate the value of a value stack and what that is. But I want to talk to the Borgogan here for a second. Ooh, because, Kyle, you are in this draft with me. And oh I, no, is Kyle slowing it down? No, no, Kyle's not slowing oh. it down. Kyle's fantastic. In no that. way. But in this value stack uh, illustration that I'm giving. There's there's someone I'm after right now, and uh -oh. you picked before me. Oh and I, no! I'm telling you right now, you draft him, you're fired. <laughs> so, I'm actually on the clock right now. Oh, are you? oh, no. oh no! Yes, the Kyle. plot thickens. Kyle, all right. Kyle. Well, I if you're on the, if I will, you're, I will rehire you. If you're on the clock, I I don't know. He he could already be off the board, even though his ADP is not quite there yet. So here's what we're gonna talk. We talk about you know in in best ball. Um, we want that stack, that wide receiver tight end or wide receiver uh, qu quarterback with a wide receiver or a tight end. Um, and so like last year, if you think about like Stephon Diggs with the best quarterback there was, Josh sure. Allen. I mean, he, he scored the most fantasy points. He was great. Or um, you feel like if you draft one of those top, uh, you drafted Kelsey, then you feel like you want to reach for Mahomes in the third, uh, not reached, that's still at ADP, but you feel the need to pull the trigger to complete that stack. An early round quarterback. Absolutely. Happens all the time. You gr you draft the early stud, and then you're like, well, I'm going to get his awesome uh, quarterback. And those stacks can certainly hit, but there is a huge opportunity cost there. They must be elite. At the quarterback position, finding value in your stacks is very, very important. Uh, in 2021, the quarterback tier that exceeded their advance rate expectation, um, and this this is for uh, the the big uh, underdog best ball mania tournament. Okay. Um, there was a window of guys that were going after pick 72, so after the eighth round. In 2021, Justin Herbert, Aaron Rodgers, Jalen Hurts, Tom Brady, Joe Burrow. Matthew Stafford. All six went round eight or later. In best ball, some people call this the quarterback window to find a sweet spot of value stacks. And so I just want to tease this out so you understand. And you say, well, wait, but Josh Allen finished as the quarterback one. He scored the most points. But the value that you are giving up by drafting that early quarterback really matters. Take a look at Stephon Diggs and, and Mike Evans, okay? They finished next to each other. Wide receiver seven, wide, wide receiver eight in terms of uh, end of season scoring, right? The Diggs Allen stack versus the Mike Evans Tom Brady stack was way different in results. The Buffalo stack actually cost you your first and third round pick and had a negative correlation to winning, even though they were great. They had, you know, uh, minus 0.02. Uh, in their correlation, whereas the Tampa Bay stack, which obviously Brady didn't score as much, had a way higher uh, correlation coefficient, 0 0.62. Take so it easy with these math terms So over for here. stacking purposes, but I can't count. I can do math, but I can't count. Uh, I'm going to go one spot higher, 403. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what we want to find is we want to find big upside with later round uh, quarterbacks. So there are some examples here, um, and Mike, you could pull out your favorites, but we, you know Russell Wilson. Just right? read, just read through them, and we'll see if the Foot Clan can find mine. <laughs> okay, you got Russell Wilson with uh, Sutton or Judy, which you, I, I do like that one. Uh, you got Brady with Evans okay. again or Fournette. You got Prescott with Ceedee Lamb early. Uh, that one is okay. You, you got Trey Lance with uh, Debo Samuel or George Kittle. You have. Uh, Oh, I thought for sure you were going to cut me off. I'm going to let people. Go oh, through. you're going to let them decide. Well, we now won't. you just. No, just... I didn't spoil anything, Mike. <laughs> I didn't spoil anything. Um, but you, you get the idea. These these quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers. It's Trey Lance, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got it. Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields to it. The, the later round quarterbacks, when you complete a stack there, it brings a lot better value. And, and so, like, sometimes it's because you drafted the early stud. You got CeeDee Lamb. Um, you know, you, you got, uh, George Kittle or, or, uh, Debo Samuel. And so you complete for me in the draft I'm in, I, I just recently took some real late, uh, value picks in Ooh. Hunter Henry and Jacoby Myers. We're in the very late. And so I really want to stack them with Mac Jones as my second quarterback. Cause I, I'm a Mac Jones believer. 
He was the Patriots were almost my answer to today's quick question, but they scored a lot of points last year, so it's hard yeah. for, to imagine them going much further up. But I, I just I really believe in Mac Jones. I think he's uh, going to take another step forward and be very good. Um, so we'll see what Kyle does now. This is where I have to pull out my phone and see and if check. it's already been done. Okay, so are you going to reveal the player that you are targeting? I ha have done that. Yes. I'm oh, not, oh, it was Mac. Okay, I'm sorry. I was thinking. Ahead. I'm not going to take Mac. Okay, Jones. thank yeah. you. Kyle's right. too smart to take Mac you Jones. <laughs> you, uh, he's you, our best ball guru over here. You are indeed on the clock. All right, but it would be really funny if you did. Maybe. But I would, I would not do that. Hey, I, I, look, I, Trey Lance, massive upside, and if like you're talking just a a real budget value stack where the wide receiver is a bit later and the quarterback is super late. Darnell Mooney and Justin Fields. Yes. Those two, I, maybe we don't get the real breakout from Justin Fields. We, we had a little report of mechanics are cleaning up. But Mooney on underdog, wide receiver 30, and then Justin Fields going in the late 12th. They're going to have at least a handful of weeks where those two single-handedly like, skyrocket your point total. That is a delicious, yes. delicious stack. Because delicious. in best ball, if they are only great – 33% of their games, you're going to get every single one of those as the correct start. And when they're great, they're going to smash for total points. All right, that was Best Ball Breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Start playing on Underdog today, right now. They'll match your first deposit up to $100 if you use the code BALLERS. That's going to do it for today's show. Jason, do you have anything else that we need to add in here? I just want to thank Andy for uh, oh, yeah. thank really you, Andy. helping us out with thank the underdog for, segment. For dialing that in there. That is going to do it, Foot Clan. Make sure you get on the Ultimate Draft Kit if you want the chance oh. at the Scott Fish Bowl. Again, three spots. If you're already in, you're in the raffle. you have through Sunday. And we'll see you next week, Foot Clan. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.